<laughs> I did enjoy Battle Angel oh. Lita, and it's like it's yeah. Right now, it's like of American adaptations is the best uh, American yeah. anime adaptation there is. But that's because like the competition mm. is like Dragon Ball Evolution, uh, Guyver. There were actually two live action oh. Guyver movies, uh, and uh, Ghost in the Shell and Speed Racer. And so Speed Racer is polarizing. And I thought, but I thought Alita was actually like pretty good. And people who are fans of the manga of Alita, like uh, Nick Anderson, who does the comic uh, Planet of Ripple, uh, he has his like uh, own YouTube channel as well, uh, Nick on the Planet of Ripple. And he does like a uh, Legos Let's Play. So mm -hmm. he's really hate the cop settlement that like how YouTube is handling it. Yeah, uh, it's a disaster is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, YouTube yeah, does the YouTube no thing of like using the algorithm and forcing uh, a lot of the burden on like the content creators and then still screwing over but, the content creators with their algorithm. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see the um, Folding Ideas video unpacking it? I yes. haven't seen that yet. Yeah. I've seen a couple of other videos, um, uh, though. It's probably the it just best short bad. summary I've gotten. Mm-hmm. It was only was 14... Like... Go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, you can go. Because uh, it was only, like, 14 uh, minutes, but it was, like, straight, like, dry information yeah. from, like, Dan Olsen. And so it's useful to, like, understanding, yeah. like, what happened, why YouTube screwed up and did something really bad, which, yes, it was advertising for kids mm -hmm. and data mining from those kids yeah. when the COPPA was meant to protect the kids and tells you you're not supposed to do that. So they paid out the settlement and do the minimalist possible to be in compliance with the settlement with the FCC by just like Fuck having a, a algorithm to bluntly label something as four kids, flag it as four kids if it appears to be four kids because like it's a, a cartoon show that's visuals that are shown a lot, like a, a adult like a reviewer of the show or a video essayist is Analyzing the show from an adult perspective as an adult viewer on a kid's mm -hmm. show, and and like non compete mentioned on their broadcast just earlier that like yeah they have puppets on the show, so that yeah. could be like brand new yeah. for God. kids. It's like bright colors it's it's really or like animation or video games. It's like oh my God, it's so broad. But also like um, I think the good thing that that video highlighted at least for me because I was also like confused about this is that it's really like YouTube doing most of this but mm -hmm. rather than mm. just like COPPA because they're because yeah. like, like YouTube is like trying to blame it on and then yeah. um, sort of almost overreacted to say like mm -hmm. hey we're complying with COPPA and then it's putting instead of in September 29 uh, what they were doing they're finding a new way to exploit kids but while blaming individual creators and taking some of the weight off, uh, not off themselves. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah, so I, I just posted still the link to that video in chat. Yeah. Forgot, by the way. Yeah. So I was in like America's chat, being like, "But American, how will they exploit the kids? Have you no compassion?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> but. If we can't exploit the kids and we can't sell them useless stuff to those kids and get them to like bug their parents constantly but, going, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Oh, we had to oh, so we'll hurt our bottom. How will the capitalists, capitalists for their money now? <laughs> I live in I live in the Seattle oh. area, so but, Jeff beat uh, those Lex Luthor is my feudal. Uh, he's a fuck. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, Bill Gates also lives here, and it's like, even yeah. though he's one of the nice billionaires, because he does a lot of, like, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and are like, he's gonna give away stuff. half his wealth, and yet he still has gained a shit ton of more wealth. And it's like, <laughs> I'm not sure if I go like Elizabeth Warren's, Elizabeth Warren's, like, wealth tax kind of plan, so I might vote for Trump for a second term. Oh my god, yeah, I've seen so many oh, people gosh. say, like, we're just gonna have to vote for Trump. Won't somebody please think of the capitalists? Uh, those poor billionaires. You know those people so are oppressed. already gonna vote for Trump. 
Yes. Oh yeah, exactly. I guarantee like, no you that if it's on. um if it's like Trump versus Warren, uh, Warren or Bernie, they're voting for Trump. Every single one of those yeah. billionaires. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, maybe Warren, Ooh. a few of them I vote for her because she's a little bit more friendly, but after all, she will just like reduce rent by ten percent over the next ten years. <laughs> My rent went up by ten percent in such one trash. year. God. Literally every candidate except one right now just fills me with dread and uh makes me feel sick inside. He's Yeah. Because yeah. like hey, if Joe Biden's a candidate... Well, that's oh. the worst part, is that it's like, who no, even like actually could even be Trump um, uh. out of these people? And, and it's like, may, it's like I know polls show Bernie beating Trump the best usually, but Bernie mm -hmm. isn't winning the primary oh. right now. And also, yeah. obviously, I think all of us here oh. have plenty of criticisms for Bernie, so it's like... Yeah. Yeah, I it's really like, do. It, but, although it's like, I, <laughs> I would say a lot of people are gonna <laughs> say Bernie is the best out of all of them. Come at me. <laughs> it depends. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I think there are some issues with how he's handled uh, the campaign in the past. I think he's a person who is open but. to learning, but yeah. he certainly has a long yeah. way to go um, on that front. Oh. Like, I'm what? not going to not vote for him. I'm not going to vote for fucking Trump. You know, I'm yeah. vote for <laughs> whoever, but I'm afraid that whoever I... is going to lose. That's the problem. Yeah. I personally think that it's kind of going to be, like, rigged. And if it's not going to be, we're going to have to put a lot of effort into making sure that it's not probably too much yeah. effort but ooh, almost no matter like which way it goes it's but yeah I've, I've got a couple guests ooh. on now Theo we're uh, we Hello. just started talking about uh, the Democratic primary I guess a little bit yeah we kind of like well we it, I think I brought that to, to that because that's kind of the conversations that I have with my family or just like any kind of thing especially when I'm on cafe because I'll go from point A to point uh, D to point 18 to point double Z that's all the way to me. point F yeah. It, yeah an anime everywhere I know it's in between I, I haven't tested but it's like it, okay. I haven't Oh, but, uh, I'm not people's... saying that's what it is for you, but that's what it is for me. <laughs> but yet, people have suggested that I should actually consider like uh, going oh. to get tested for like adult ATD because, like, like in the uh, broadcast, yes, I was in the YouTube oh. live chat and in the mm -hmm. Twitch live chat, and it was always until like the very end, like I maybe just like what, what, Summer Geek, are you in both <laughs> chats? What are you doing? But... And I was like, mm -hmm. I was multitasking. Skippy says, apparently Mayor Pete's uh, Mayor Pete's suit is from his first communion. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is now, up with him? He's so Pete, racist. <laughs> yeah, Pete Buttigieg. Oh God! Just because. I hate him. Yeah. Uh, uh, flea market anarch uh, flea market socialist did a great video about like Pete Buttigieg. It's a short one, only three minutes. Basically, Pete Buttigieg is the gay maturian candidate from the 2000 maturian candidates are in Denzel Washington. Well, he's. <laughs> uh, thank you for following. Racism too, and he keeps like doing racist crap. It's like every month again. he says something racist but, or does yeah. something. It's so bad. I've lost count, and yet somehow, whenever I mention it, people are like. Racist? What? Well, yeah, because people like do don't, mean? they never sh tell that stuff incident? on the news uh, because he is their like backup oh. for if Biden doesn't work out for them. And it's but, like he's funded by all these oh. billionaires and he has all of his yes. people are handpicked by literally oh. Mark Zuckerberg. It's insane. Mark Zuckerberg mm. is like buddies but, with Trump. You people know this, right? Like, come on. Fuck. It's, it's horrible. 
Yeah, like Sasha Baron Cohen what? said at the like anti defamation like league that like if if Facebook was around in like the nineteen thirties Germany that they would have like allowed Adolf Hitler to put up ads about the final solution. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that's like almost becoming the whole point of these sites, right? And like they're so the thing is they're like they can be great for connecting and organizing and all that, right? But they're also sure. so easy to manipulate. So easy. Can so you... since Beto is out now, we don't oh. have to care about him, Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> the... He you know, was I actually weird. get mixed up between Beto and Buddhist Judge. They're, uh, yeah, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're kind like... of all the same. Except <laughs> Buddhist Judge is... But, uh, is Beto yeah. racist? I feel like that might be the one thing that he's not. I Maybe like I don't know. Maybe he's white. Yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. like you're. It's like you're, you're rolling the dice when you're like talking yeah. to a white person. Is this person racist? Though usually Especially, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, that's like that's that's the default you can go to, especially in America, yeah. and especially in certain parts in America. Mm. Uh, not to like oh. paint everyone the broad brush or like well, generalize all those. The racism is different. But, oh. True. I think hey. we imagine that the racism is like more so in like the south or more rural areas, but I think, but um. To me, the more, more important thing is the um, institutionalized racism. Don't know why my yes. brain is blanking. Yeah. Um, which and, mostly uh, comes from like rich people and politicians, and uh, the educated, which oh, a lot of a lot people of, think. Yeah, a lot of people seem will to solve racism. Do Sorry. Uh, <laughs> not oh. really. Like like, like that's, the black person that's the thing about is that the prejudices like the ideas like the ideas that we like to think of are racism are really a, basically a capitalist trick right because it's all this individualism yeah. stuff it's like oh you have these individual prejudices yourself but it's like that's not the main problem the problem is that yeah. those prejudices are ingrained exactly. into the system but, and, our, and the yeah, movies I was have just late. talking to some friends about like how um i don't actually because people it's not only that they make it an individual problem it's that they somehow make it about like how you feel inside yeah and i was talking to some friends about like how you know i don't really care how white people like feel about me really <laughs> it's like it's what people are doing and if you're talking about the most racism being done uh, but, I mean, yeah, r white rural people are pretty racist, but, but they don't have the most institutional power. Does that make sense? I mean, some of them do, but uh, mm -hmm. it depends. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, um, so I have like a, oh. like a, uh, some people of color who like, they, they, they honestly don't mind the in your face overt what? racism that they can get in the south but they have a problem with like the subtle racism that they can get from like the northern states or the bluer states which is kind of like i would have voted for obama for a third term yeah. if i was allowed to like and get out <laughs> makes the perfect example but i think different people have their preferences i don't know that i have a preference but but i don't know i think sometimes the subtle racism is harder to like actually deal with Though, especially because, like, I don't know, like, if someone's screaming in your face, less people are going to expect you, um, to respond kindly to that. Um, but if it's like, hey, hi, hi, if it's like subtle jabs or things that are seen as more acceptable, if you actually, like, react to that, um, in my experience at least, uh, eh, geez, you're gonna get a lot more trouble. Because people expect you to be civil, because they see their own racism as civil. Yeah, ah, that's it. In in my um, like where what? I'm from, in like rural northern oh. Illinois, where I was, um, you know, where I grew up, um, we had um, my town, which had it was a college town, 
bitch. And it was um, significantly more diverse than the town right next to us, which is like almost all white. And it was amazing to see the difference uh, just like yeah. in how like the laws were made and stuff mm -hmm. between the two towns. And it's like now the, the cops oh. in both towns are insanely racist. There was even actually a major um, bad uh, thing that the cops did with a um, like tasing somebody who had weed or something on the campus and stuff like that mm. um, recently that was bad Jeez. Uh, but in terms of the like lo the yeah. the way thing people would talk about things was very different between the two towns so it's like you still have that institutionalized racism in both towns and you have the racist cops and the racist judicial system or whatever it's all the same there but in the town next over people would be a lot more open about the racist stuff so yeah. for example we always we have like a train line going through our town and like um people would always want to extend the passenger rail out from chicago to our town um but then the neighboring town didn't want that because i mean the answer is they don't want non-white people to be able to take the train out to our right. town exactly. it's insane sorry i don't know why i keep doing that um, it took me a long time to uh, stop using stuff like that. Yeah, too, so it's. Like, I get it's. It. I think it's I'm my biggest stuff. Uh, we're happy that you're <laughs> aware of it at least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, the, oh. I, I try to be conscious about that too. But, it's just I try to like use like words like awful, geez. ridiculous, or like terrible. Is yeah, I got um, around it a lot by just like creating um, alternatives or stuff like that, or like reminding myself of what I meant to say and if I meant it. If I actually like slipped up or something, um, I would like go over it later and be like, okay, what could I have said instead? So that way I'm not like, what? Those aren't the words I'm automatically reaching for. Because mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. the thing that happens is it's so yes. ingrained that it's like right there in your brain. You can just grab it's it. A, it's so. amazing how but bad it feels like as oh. someone who has been diagnosed with mental illnesses too it's like yeah. why am i doing this to myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> the internalized ableism but i still deal with it a lot even though i've cleaned up my language a lot more he's mm -hmm. so that's but yeah but i completely get that again it'd be and... worse if you just weren't aware of it which a exactly. lot of people are like or, They're not even or, trying. Right. Or would oh. you, like, or some, for some people, would you point it out to them? But, they're like, what? What's wrong with my... Are you censoring oh them? Oh, my like, gosh. Are you... Got that are you serious? I pointed out probably way too much, and I've had, like, so many different reactions. The one that amuses me most is, like, I was in a stream, but where I, like, wasn't even a mod or anything. I was just, like, viewing the stream, right? Mm -hmm. And I always, um... Because I know it's so ingrained, I always try to be as polite as I can, because I know people don't know. But this person, like, ac accused me of gatekeeping, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> but but at how? <laughs> like, I politely asked you to not use, like, a couple wor or, like, one word or something on a stream that's not mine, and I'm not a mod, and I can't do anything to you, so, like... Yeah, this, this, this is, that's something that I was bringing up um, in my stream yesterday um, when I was talking with uh, Chopin Hauer. Uh, there was, um, we were talking about the Vampire Castle essay, which oh, is, a, a, it's a mess. Have, the reason I've it's a mess, it. besides I've the, besides the essay being just bad in my opinion, but the reason that it's a mess is that every time I see someone use it, it's always them Jared. trying to shut up somebody who's more marginalized than them for, like, criticizing. Yes. Okay, this is the problem that I keep having is, like, people value keeping, like, bigots in the quote-unquote left rather <sighs> than actually caring about marginalized people. It's like they yes. care about having some of us are, allies, are, but not actual yeah. allies. <laughs> It's like, it's if like the allies some, are some of us bags, are really acceptable sacrifices to yeah. the movement. 
It's like, sorry, so your optics aren't appealing. good enough, so we're gonna have to oh, not care about you. Yeah. Like, I don't care if anyone coming to the left is, like, automatically perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's but that's like what whole it, the Faraday Speaks Project thing is. You're not supposed to is. just, like, let people stew in their bigotry. Like, obviously, you still mm -hmm. have to hold people accountable for that. Yes. And maybe that's not always, like, uh, supposed to play out the way it does, cats, because sometimes it is more vitriolic, especially if someone's actually trying to learn. But mm -hmm. you don't, like, sacrifice your values so you can keep this problematic person. If they're really committed to the movement, then they won't want to hurt people. Keys, and they'll stay, they'll keep learning and growing as people say like hey you're doing this thing don't know if you know it's problematic but stop they'll respond to that oh, if they're not actually serious then they'll get out and that's like fine with me cause like why do we want those people <laughs> Keith. yeah yeah. Uh, just so real quickly um, I'm gonna uh, go to the restroom real quick so oh. y'all can uh, just entertain uh, people for uh, oh yeah now. sure thing cause yeah, this it's like uh, this is this is why yeah. I this is why it's like we gotta like being on the left and having like actual safe spaces for like marginalized yeah. people. We just cannot like immediately let in like any like ex neo Nazi yes. right away if they haven't been like uh, if they yeah. haven't like done the self self reflection and work on themselves to like. Not what? have those reactionary views or say those reactionary things or reactions. And why are those even the people we're target? I mean, I suppose it's good yeah. to have some people reaching out to those people, but like, for some people, that's their whole practice. That's their whole yeah. practice, and like that gets annoying. Um, but I saw a comment from, oh, uh, yes, Yeti. Yeti. I'm you could sorry, just call I don't know Yeti. how to pronounce. Yeti, yay. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to, like, go back on this for a little bit. Sure. Uh, 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 bit. Um, pe they said, mm -mm 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 -mm. people used to say stuff, say to me stuff like, you are the dumbest person I know because of how I am on the autism spectrum. Before anyone knew I was on the spectrum, I used to keep it a secret. Oh, and I wanted to highlight that because, like, um, a lot of people will say that they're not using, like, dumb or stupid to mean, like, disabled people. But as someone who's, like, been disabled without, like, any diagnoses or anything, fuck, it is often disabled people that, that gets lobbied against, and people mm. just aren't, um, thinking of it like that. So, fuck, that is something I did want to, like, highlight, because people always are telling me, like, it's not connected to a diagnosis, it's not against disabled people. Oh, okay. sorry. But, like, yeah. if I have, like, brain fog one day and I, I do something, like, quote-unquote stupid, that's what people are going to call it. Even mm. though it's my disability, people don't automatically connect those dots. Oh, and yeah. it is connected to disability, so... <laughs> yeah, that, I actually, you know, like, oh. I probably have like, a Twitter chat. I was called mm. out for doing that sort of thing, connecting, like... Oh how someone was like spelling or not using punctuation oh. to the, uh, to their uh, being on the spectrum someone immediately called me out and said dude that's not cool don't do that and I was like I was like to like wait a minute was I being nameless there but oh I was oh yeah because so it's so like ingrained right like you don't even mm -hmm. think about it unless like you've been confronted with it Exactly. So I apologize in the ch that chat. Uh, said I'm sorry. I'll try to like do better and work work on it. And they, they and they forgive me, and we're still friends now. Fuck. Well, yeah, Skippy, just, um, I I might talk to you later, Skippy. You immediately? Uh, if you want to talk about that, but yeah. Sorry, I'm just talking to my friend. But <laughs> I don't worry. Fuck. We we're just having a con uh, casual conversation yeah. about like uh, anime politics and then like ableism because yeah, capitalism is just inherently <laughs> ableist. Yes, exactly. This is what I keep trying to say. Fuck. Oh yeah, what were we discussing on the other on Americans chat about like fuck um 
how capitalism is, is inherently ableist, but that doesn't get like challenged a lot. I think yeah. uh, some random geek mentioned some stuff about that too. Yeah, because like Jeez. my co-host on like social Ooh. justice alchemy, uh, Little Arno, she's disabled herself, uh, fibromyalgia and arthritis, and so I she... have fibromyalgia. Yay! Yeah, Yay, yeah. Uh, I have my Ooh. other friend who I. Chat. <laughs> yeah, my other friend has, has also like uh, fibromyalgia as well, and like she, she has a lot of other conditions. But like Litorano has like Ooh. said that like no one has to be of use to anyone else. People can just like That's be what people I keep like, saying. Yeah, people can just be like do whatever they want and should Ooh. be able to live like have all the necessities of like Don't, life. Um, uh, like. Yeah, exactly. And she will constantly what? say and like hates the, the the narrative. You can like you can go on to about this last snapple oh. of like the inspiration narrative of disabled people. No, Latana will always say, "I am not your inspiration." Yeah. Uh huh. And like also, fuck. A lot of the times when I fuck, 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 I'm a cat. Uh, a lot of the times when I talk about this stuff, people will try to say try to make it out like everyone can like do something or offer something and um the reason although that might sound like positive to some people on the surface um but for the, anyone who doesn't know I have a disease called ME or myalgic encephalomyelitis long name I know you just call it ME um and I'm on the milder side, but the people who are severely sick with ME, um, live in a dark room, can't have hardly any stimulation, can't eat, can't, um, uh, can't talk, really, um, a lot of them have a hard time thinking, you know, stuff like that, um, that you'd, uh, what? I don't know, a lot of people would consider, like, work they cannot do, mm. and because I know of, like, people who are like that, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable, um, placing any sort of, like, value on what someone can do, because I think, what, the, the minute we start valuing humans based on, like, ability, um, there's going to be somebody that's left out. Fuck. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But yet, it is the capitalist myth that's so ingrained to us as well that, like, the people yeah. have, like, ask us, and I never realized that until, like, I don't know, like, a last year or something like that. Wait a minute. Why do we ask kids, what is your dream job? Why are we, like, trying to, like, tell people, like, your dream mm -hmm. should be a job? Yeah. But... Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously we're never going to have a society where no one has to work. True. So. Well, but, right, yeah. I mean, yeah, but like, my whole shtick is that you shouldn't have to work to live. It shouldn't be an ultimatum that like, right. you either do this thing or like, we basically abandon you on the street. But... Yeah, I'm yeah. currently and like no matter what that thing is, key. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's there's a reason why we have from each according to their ability to each according to their needs, you know. Like that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to me that's so but I know a lot of like Marxism isn't anti ableist, but like that quote mm -hmm. in particular always struck me as yeah. like yeah, the I, I always tell people that they need to read the Critique of the Gotha Program. Like, if they want to read Marx, they should probably read it. Because it, it yeah, has yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I can that's, hardly that's, read. That's from there. <laughs> so. Yeah, reading is... Oh, yeah. I, I don't... I, I am bad at reading. Reading abilities <laughs> back somewhat. But... But... But yeah, for yeah, people who can and want to, to read Marx, that's definitely something that you should probably look yeah. at. 
which is which is why actually like uh, because like I'm able to like oh. listen to like stuff on like uh, my mm -hmm. phone at work. Uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and a lot of like Audible anarchists, and so if like that's on like uh, audiobooks, I probably will eventually like read the books as well in like in digital form or something like that. And there are some books that are not in audiobooks because they're oh. very new, like the People's Republic of Walmart, which I find quite oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I, need to get, I need to see that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah I good. tried to audiobook Marks on, like, YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I got some stuff out of it, but honestly, like, my attention was so bad at the time. Oh, yeah. And it really One does, things... like, affect Sorry. me, like, what voice it is. So, um... Yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's true. One of the things with Marx is that a lot of it is basically, like, Capital is just a 3,000-page economics textbook, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. like... This isn't something I want to listen. It's not entertaining. Like you, reading it to me, yeah. like when I can bother to, it's hard to read. But like, it's like there's some of it that's like, oh wow, this is really interesting. And then it's like, I get through like three pages, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, yeah, that I'm... just that happens to me a lot. Like I'm just I can't this read more than like for... twenty pages a day of anything. YouTube videos. And my <laughs> YouTube channel is um. I need to do in the next video in my series, but oh, I, I just read things, and I, I either just read things out loud, like to do like an audio book thing, or I'll read something out loud and then comment on it, like talking about it. Um, so oh, that's something because I think that that's something that um, a lot of people would like. So yeah, it's like a lot of uh, other comrades have like I had that idea where just like it's either they will do a video about the book like uh, Narco Syndicalist in Theory and Practice by um, Real Ralph Proctor, Proctor or yeah uh, Reading Radical like rebranded her channel their channel um, to do that um, but they haven't made any more videos Does she exist? She uh, got yeeted off of Twitter for, by people harassing her right? I, th I think so because yeah, after the, was... she like criticized contrapoints and then yeah. people oh. yelled at her. Wait, who is this? I like. Uh, so Radiant Two Pi was person. her old handle, and then she switched yes. to Reading Radical. What? Yes. Oh. And she got harassed for criticizing Contra. Yeah. So what? The worst part is that it was like, so oh. like this was during the latest. Uh no wait it might it was even before that I think oh. it was during the pronouns. Yeah, the pronoun yeah. circle oh. thing and it's like okay um so that you one contra points got tons of um <laughs> harassment for that and then anyone who criticized her got counter harassment from the toxic people in contra stands and it's like <laughs> so i definitely think there's a harassment problem on oh. in like everyone's fandoms uh yeah, yeah i do agree it's yeah. it's a it's like just stop harassing people please please Actually, like, um, my friend, uh, Marty Athermathy, who is, like, how does, uh, she's, like, she is a binary trans woman in the body of a non-binary trans woman, because, she says that because, like, she knows her face, she's physically trans, but anyway, she did, uh, a tea party on this about, like, fans and stands, and pointed out that, like, stands came from the Eminem song from the early aughts, of, yeah, like, yeah. of a ex the extreme fanatic fan that was like mm -hmm. so devoted to it was his like fandom toxic to like stalker type oh. fans and it's perfect it's a perfect yeah. description yeah. it's uh yeah so it's just like it's okay to like like someone but just because you really like someone doesn't mean that like they can't be criticized doesn't mean we should put them on a mantle and say do you know of like how much that the, this person has done for our movement how dare oh, I you hate that like... thing. Exactly. yeah in fact here's the funny thing about like contrapoints actually because like you when i watched the aesthetics i did have mixed feelings about that video when i first watched it yeah but it, my feelings were like I know my trans friends are going to really hate this. I, like, and trans Twitter are really going to hate this. And I was right. But like, when I was watching a response video by a non-binary person who goes, whose name is Fenya, uh, they're on, on Twitter and they're awesome. This was a what? vlog that they did while putting on makeup in response to the aesthetics. And they removed private, unlisted from the channel. But that oh. vlog video just, I lit a spark in me and I questioned my gender more significantly. Yeah. 
for a week, and then it was like October after a week. It was October 11th. Oh, it's National Coming Out Day. Um, uh, <laughs> family. I am non-binary. Out, right? I wait. This feels right to me. I am. I am man. So that's why he, him is still my pronouns, and my don't. My body doesn't cause me dysphoria, oh. but being cis does cause me a bit of dysphoria. It just doesn't feel right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, something that, it's like you, you just the social that, construct of the of the particular genders can just be so uh, oppressive, and it's like it's like why even me. bother sometimes, you know? I mean, uh, even before oh. I came out as non-binary, I was like wearing leggings because I I love the leggings, and it was honestly <laughs> because okay. like a piece I mean, of cloth I'm has no home. gender, you know? It's like it's ridiculous. Exactly. But it, it was because uh, I'm a geek. I love to wear my geekiness uh, as my aesthetic on the t-shirts I buy, the hats that I have, like, and various such things. But when it came to, like, pants or slacks, no graphic geeky uh, pants there is unless I go into, like, quote, oh, women's oh. leggings. So I was just mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm just going to buy leggings. It's like, oh, I love how Gotta they get feel. get those fun leggings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wore the shorts because of the pockets, and it was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, women's clothes don't have pockets? Oh Why yeah, is that? No, it's serious this. oppression, I and I, I said so that much. non-ironically. But, <laughs> With, no, like it, fashion it, it, you is know just how bad. Pointing it is like when you finally, especially because like I have a lot of trouble finding pants that fit because apparently I'm like absurdly tall, <laughs> mm. but like. Then you finally find pants that fit, and then you go with your hand to, like, slide into the pocket, and it's all sewn up, and it's just fake, and I'm like, Why oh, they tease me pockets! There? Yeah, yeah, Please, Skippy, they don't have pockets have a... to promote purses. It's, it's all a racket, yeah. But, like, if you're gonna design a fake pocket, then, like, literally all you have to do is open that up, and put a little extra cloth there. Yeah. <laughs> Not that hard. Oh, oh, but, I love fake but, pockets. Like, it's the most ridiculous thing. But if thing. women put, like, anything oh. in there, like their keys or wallets or their phones, it'll look bulky and will ruin the aesthetic of, like, the, the, their Women only the exist clothing. for people to look at. <sighs> Clearly. God. Oh. Uh, yeah. I also have skirts. Dope. Only two. There's some with pockets. Oh. Yeah, actually, there's like oh. a guy that like a decided to like just wear like a like a, a big leather skirt that like goes down to his knees and but, for like, like playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also that. Yes, oh. like and yes, this yes, the Scots do actually go commando under oh. the kilts and in certain Scottish regiment, regiments where that. they wear the kids. <laughs> Where they will the kids, they what? do. They actually do have to stand on on a mirror for their uh, oh sergeant to inspect to see if they're wearing oh. like uh, pants. Because in the UK they call underwear pants, right? Yeah, and and, and like uh, but, what we call pants, they call trousers. So be be mindful as yeah. you want to like lower their pants. Oh. And, but yeah, it's, if it, for the actual regiment of like the uh, Scottish. Uh, army men or infantry or whatever that wear the kilts, they do have to like go commando mm. a, a, in uniform, essentially. Keith, I don't really understand how like like why would skirts and dresses be inherently fem- Just be- Like I tried so to I'd imagine have the to that look this- up some fashion history for that, but yeah. Happened. <laughs> it's it's oh. institutionalized, but it's like there are so many other. It's like it's only a Western thing because there are so Don't. many other things uh, like cultures where like you've got robes and like dress like uh-huh. things that um, yeah. not but, women are wearing. But also, I love being able to wear pants. I have to say, Don't, Skippy, your sister like had a. I'm sorry. Skirts and dresses. Your sister had a wedding dress with pockets. Oh yeah, yeah. Once women, she she should flaunt that because that's amazing. (laughs) Yes, 
when's when's like a like when like I, a woman also goes like I found this dress. It fits me. <laughs> it's comfy. I like the look of it, and it has pockets. It's, it's always, always like the it has the pockets. I love I love the part. camaraderie yeah. that uh, appears as soon as somebody with uh, is wearing like a skirt or a dress that has pockets. Everyone's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it's kind of sad. How, like, yeah. Easily, we're like. <laughs> oh my god! It has pockets. Oh. I am so happy. It has pockets. Wow, nice. It's like this extra thing, even though it shouldn't be. So we're like, yeah, it has pockets instead of like, OMG, all the other stuff doesn't have pockets. Mm. Oh. It's like conditioning or something. But yeah, actually, yeah, like social conditioning as well. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, it which is why, yeah, like at work, because uh, I work nine to five and like Monday through Friday, people would say, Happy Friday! And I would go, Why? Why be happy on Friday? I know I'm going to come back in on Monday. I need to because I need to pay in for, for food, rent, and also my disabled comrades that I'm financially supporting as much as I can. And, and to which it's like, and finally, uh, like I posted on Facebook, my older brother who's also left this has said it's because we uh, like it's because we like associate a different emotion to each day of the week. Mm -hmm. So Friday is happy, uh, Monday is resentful, uh, Sunday is guilt written, and Wednesday is lustful. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, capitalism! You yes. ever think about how many like weird stuff like that? Is because of capitalism and like there's so many different angles and moving parts and little details and the keys. It's, it's the happy hour. But, Why is this happy? Because it's the yeah. hour after work where you can drink. That's what your role would always point <laughs> out and he's like uh, yeah. I think you know when I think about this stuff I think like more people don't like capitalism than you think. It's just like there's a there's definitely a subconscious like, recognition that there are but, bad things with the system, oh, but people oh. don't mm -hmm. equate them all to yeah. Like they'll be like, "That's bad," but they're not going to be like they don't really realize why it happens. They don't connect the dot. Like mm -hmm. for like, who likes ads? No one. <laughs> no, I was no. talking about this on my stream yesterday. You it's have like what the to hell? Have the ads. Ad so block, like... skip ad. Oh. Um, Yeti, no, it's, um, oh. it's, uh, that, some random geek and Snapple and cats. Mecca is, yes. I think, went to bed or something. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> before I got here, I saw an, an unanswered message on Discord. So I gotta get to that one somehow. Um. But yeah, I think there's so many little things like that where, like, oh, if you didn't, like, what? <laughs> if you really like capitalism, you wouldn't be complaining about how long your work is or how high rent is. Or, like, the, there's so many things that people don't like and they're just, like, just connect the dots a little bit. You're so close. Key. Yes, Yeti, this is me, some random geek. Hello, I am some random geek, your co host of like, um, <laughs> of Social Justice Alchemy. Oh. I also have my own YouTube channel, which sometimes I will eventually post things up there as well. And so check me out. I'm also the same some random geek on Twitter, and yeah. I'll post your YouTube oh. channel as well. Oh, and Snapple and Cats, if there's anything you wanted to um, plug, I will post, or you can oh, post in the chat. I just basically have my YouTube channel and like I'm on Twitch occasionally when I have energy but it takes energy to look even like kind of decent so I'm not on there <laughs> as much like look kind of decent and then like sit up and talk and have coherent thoughts mm -hmm. um, and here's Snapple's but I get on there YouTube occasionally. channel oh. Oh, mm. I think I think that's why like uh, uh, my friend John Proper Shrovishan who like uh, started the Social Justice oh. Alchemy one after he 
invited me on to be like a co-host he then just like let's also get like Latano on as a co-host so that way it's like three people who like who are on and and, and this just is alchemy like a patreon that we just like launched just to cover the cost of like a um, zoom subscription so that we can like uh, do more than 40 minutes of like streaming with yeah, zoom yeah. as a photo conference uh but, as he says so, like uh okay. there are five regular irregular hosts of social justice oh. alchemy because like it'd be rare if you get all like, all five of us on a stream but it sounds really cool I can't wait to like, because I didn't know about it. Oh, we're, yeah, we're small but, but, and like, I oh. I tried to like uh, promote it and be like the <laughs> capitalist like on other streams, which <laughs> does actually work to like get people to like uh, check it out. Oh, kind of like Kunado yeah. on like uh, today's like social Sunday socialist stream mentioned something oh. that I said about Cop Up from the oh, ideas videos on yeah. Yesterday. Uh. And pretty much like the, the, the social justice alchemy is just like this. We just this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Latino will say like, "Can we not talk about Contra? We already talked about it enough. I'm already done with Contra. She's not improving and yeah. like that." And so that's fine. So then we do. Um, uh, no, I do not. No, yet I do not do Twitch streams yet. I could. I. I, I had to really get the motivation to be able to like uh, do Twitch streams, but like maybe I should. I have like over a thousand followers on Twitter. Then there I go thinking about like capitalism again, the oh. social media influencer. Um, but I could, but like uh, yeah. sometimes we just like change topics on social justice alchemy. But sometimes because of me, and we'll talk oh. about like cartoons or like superhero comic book movies. Shazam is a really fun comic book superhero movie. Nice. Um, you know what I, you reminded me that I should plug, though? Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot, like, probably the most important thing to plug. Oops. Hold on. Sorry. Um. On my Twitter, which is not Snapple and Cats, it's actually at Twitchy Spoonie. Um, okay. I do have a, um, GoFundMe, uh, for my teeth. I gotta get, um, some cavities filled. Which is difficult with threats because of all the uh, involuntary movements. So I need anesthesia, which is not covered by insurance. Um, and it's gonna cost uh, around three thousand dollars. We kind of think. Jeez. Um. Yeah. This country. Uh. <laughs> so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's my pin tweet again at Twitchy and Spoonie. Yeah, I just threw um, it in the chat. Even for if you. you can't like um, donate, oh, I would really appreciate it if you shared it because then it gets to people who can donate. Um. So yeah, help me uh, keep tea. We're almost there, actually. I think. So, look. I'm not quite as worried about it, but we're still, <laughs> it's still gonna hurt us where we're at. Um, so yeah, please keep sharing and donating so I can keep my teeth. Teeth. Mm hmm. Oh. Um, yeah, that's something that uh, I've been doing because, like, I, as far as I know, I'm normally typical okay. and uh, I'm definitely a gave body. And so, oh. uh, but like, Whenever like my tweets do go viral, I try to remember just like okay, okay. Uh, since this is going like has over more than three hundred like uh, retweets, please everyone give money on share or at least share around the begging bowl here, or share around this, and share around this, and share around this, and like I try to remember to do that for every yeah, tweet. That's that goes, and I, like my pinned uh, tweet is happened to be just like the charity links for my my friends that like are are either in a tough situation or like my friend Joanna and like uh, Phoenix. Well, they're disabled in, in this country and always needs money. And yeah, yeah. But I should do something like that. Yeah, you know, even for like this GoFundMe, it's like, but it's technically going to my parents so it's their money because if I had that much money I would actually get kicked off disability god yeah it's so bad which is <laughs> mm. wonderful yeah it makes me it's so like, angry if you, if you can pay yeah. for your but, uh, for a medical you can... expense you're not allowed to get uh, <laughs> any help whatsoever great 
Oh, yeah, because the limit is $2,000. Mm. So if I could pay for a $3,000 anesthesia, even though, you know, there's, like, basically no other choice, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then I would go. Actually, yeah, if I continue to get disability after that, I would, like, be breaking the law, which is ridiculous. Uh, oh. okay. And and that's There's... the thing. It's like oh, no, you go, go ahead. ahead. No, you you can go. Fine. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like people oh. who do not use like the uh, public assistance like programs think that like <laughs> no, the, the, that's why free housing is here, or public housing is here, or these like Medicaid is here. <laughs> oh and it's like gosh. okay, unless you are actually on those programs, oh. you don't know what it's like. I think that's why I have said is like I think for more people to be radicalized but, to be against yeah. like a uh, capitalism, they gotta like know Ooh. people in poverty and mostly mm -hmm. like disabled people in poverty. Yeah. But uh, and also as but, my co-host uh, John Brackman Sugarstein says, you also can't be religious or can't be fundamentally Ooh. Christian as well. And then maybe you will be like a leftist if you like know poor yeah. people, because like so, um. What's really interesting to me is that there are 40 million people in the United States mm -hmm. who are on uh, food assistance, like on the SNAP program. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a oh. shit ton of people. And it's and you're invisible. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, then yeah, we'll people don't see it. Ever. Like, they don't imagine it. Unless they're in it, and then once you're in it, you don't want to talk about it because it's seen as like shameful or like oh, God, people shame. are gonna look for ways that you're scrounging off the government. They're gonna say you have too much. They're gonna judge you. Um, look, they're, they're buying steak with their EBT oh. card. Yeah, if you're disabled, they're looking food. for a thousand ways that you could be faking. Mm. Um, oh. So, and yeah. this is why we need universal what? programs to okay. like people are so afraid to propose universal oh. programs and it's like I think the universal programs need to be added to mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we definitely there should yeah. definitely be oh. but I feel like the universal programs should be a minimum oh. for people to live and then yeah. anyone who needs anything more absolutely has to get that, like, it. People um, yeah. Uh, don't really understand that disabled people need more a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I should probably have a carer, and that's not gonna, like, come through a sort of universal program. Um, mm -hmm. but if I were to, like, move out of my parents' home, which I should be able to do, um, in a, in a free society, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then, like, yeah, I would need... Uh, something like that, like some, some sort of care service. Thank you for following um, uh, Blanco FTP. Not to mention, like, what the healthcare costs, the cost of getting um, mobility devices or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put anything else to make your world more accessible to you. And uh, so. Sorry, I yeah, just want to post a um, YouTube channel. This is Jessica oh. Kelgren Fozard, and she yes, is a fantastic YouTuber so from the UK. Hey. And yeah. what you'll find out by watching her is that it's not any better there. <laughs> well, I actually it kind of is. Well, but like they have the I NHS, hear, but that's about yes, it. Yes, they have the NHS. Awful. They have the NHS, well, but well, like in terms of the actual services. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just like everyth it's everything thing. I hear people here saying seems but. like uh, similar to her experience. I, I'm sure it is worse here because America is like a toxic hellscape. Yeah. But well, I remember yeah. reading like um, Jess Tom is a, a disabled person. She has Tourette's and she's in the UK and she gets like so many services that to me are just like almost unimaginable and like there's still not enough and it's still like really mm -hmm. really stressful for her yeah but it's like hard also not to be like jealous because she has like um oh she can get round the clock care she can get her house modified um she can get uh free wheelchairs and she can get them fixed 
at the NHS for free. And, you know, you know stuff like that, that to me is, like, almost hard to imagine. <gasps> but yeah. obviously, people over there are still dying, actually. Mm-hmm. Austerity. Those programs. Yeah, <laughs> and it's still oh, getting God, cut. No. Cut. And uh, changed in ways like that are hurting people. It's, like, constantly getting worse. So. Uh, the Tories Not to mention, uh, I've heard of like even um, police targeting disabled people at protests and using <clears> that <throat> to say that they're not disabled. Oh my god! So yeah. if they find disabled people at the protests, fuck, they'll get kicked off of their programs. Yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, um, <laughs> I think uh, most countries uh, in the so-called West seem to have a better healthcare system than the U.S. That's uh, yeah. But so I've heard that in Sweden, there's been some austerity though too. Like even in mm-hmm. the countries that we like to look up to as like the best like social democracy type places, what? it's like recently it seems like there's been um, some regression. Oh. I don't know if you want to if you can speak to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have heard of uh, like I, I just like look it up online of how like I think Norway also is like right now controlled by like a far right government or mm. like a far right party in the government, and so it's mm. like yeah, but yet liberals and like mm. wa- who are anti-revolutionists because I have my oh. I used to be friends with some liberals, and then like I post a meme that went too far because it said kill all landlords as a joke, but apparently that's too far for them in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember it in a video game? Yeah, um, watch this get clipped <laughs> in a video game, we, folks. Everything is in a video game. The FBI is like putting this in our file for later. <laughs> We say it all the time, oh, I'm gosh. like, it's just, just this alchemy, kill all landlords, oh. in a video game. Um, <laughs> but yet the liberals want to, like, just but. be like Sweden, just like, be like oh. Norway, because it's we can do oh. that through reform, and thus don't need a revolution, because revolutions are bad. Look at the French Revolution, yeah. look at the Russian Revolution, and it's just like... <sighs> I As mean, so the, the interesting thing about the revolution... Still colonialist and living off the labor of four people in other countries. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, there's that. One of the th- interesting things about the revolution versus yeah. reform argument is I feel like um, there's a... People have this... They have certain ideas of revolution, mm-hmm. right? Like, um, mm-hmm. and there's a great Malcolm X speech where he talks about revolution, uh. and he, he says um, that he believes that this is like oh. we're now at a point, and this is back during the civil rights movement, of course, where mm-hmm. there is actually potential to have, like, a relatively non-violent revolution. Like, the civil rights movement was not, like, you okay. didn't get any gains from that f- by being peaceful, Ooh. right? But, yeah. like, relatively peaceful <laughs> compared to, like, a massive war or something like that is the mm-hmm. point. Um, and I would say, you know, obviously, um, the civil rights uh. movement did not succeed in in a nearly as good of a way as I would yeah because uh, like uh, MLK like. was a socialist yeah and that yeah, yeah. like it's like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King were both uh, heavily socialist and even more so mm-hmm. near the end of their lives mm-hmm. um and they um you know so like I, it was really interesting just to hear a lot of the talk these days about revolution versus reform um and it's like we've been talking about this for like 200 years yeah and it's pretty obvious every single time like you for example you look at the new deal you had the new deal and then over the next you know 20 to 50 years uh it but by 50 years Uh, after that it was all gone yeah yeah like you can put the reforms in place but they don't last harm reduction yeah. yeah, exactly. But, it's like I'm not against them. A lot of people are exactly. against them, and I'm yeah, like, oh yeah, being an against like electoralism outright is kind of weird. Revolution when all the marginalized people are dead from the policies that we, do, you know. Yeah. Um. Agree. So, I'm not against them, but it's also like not. I get annoyed when people think that that is going to be like the solution, and then like. We can just stop after we get these few laws passed. Yeah, my yeah. my definition of a successful mm-hmm. revolution, like in terms of what it, the end result is, uh, in anything, right, is oh. that you put the policies that you want in place and Whoa. they stay there. 
and people yeah, are right. not allowed to get rid of them basically that would be a successful Ooh, that last part. uh revolution so it's like you put if you put for example somehow we got medicare Yay. for all somehow um how much you want to bet they're gonna try and like we know what they did to obamacare already right mm -hmm. in just less than four years oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. they will get rid of every single thing you but put in there if they are ever allowed back into power. And that yeah, is the problem. Exactly. You can't allow uh, them into any sort of power. It, which is why I think it was but, like, I forgot where I heard this because I think it was like Guy de Boer who said the society is a spectacle. Yes, that is uh, his that, book. Like, it's a good book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to read that book because like I saw the it's radical good. reviewer at Radio Into a Pie, like video covering it in this video, video yeah. but like yeah uh the only successful revolution that actually changed the whole world was the bourgeoisie revolution of exactly. the french revolution yeah. the english the english civil war and the american revolution mm -hmm. were instead of like right. governments most governments being like a, mm -hmm. a mostly monarch mm -hmm. monarchy uh they became um a republic in most parts yeah but what is what's always interesting and in the point about bourgeois revolutions is it's I mean it's right in the title the answer is that the bourgeois owned the means of production before and after the revolution they still own the means but, of production that's the whole yeah it's like it's not an anti-capitalist revolution it's just exactly. they have more control over the, it's actually regressive because they yeah. have even more control over the government even if you were like but, like obviously monarchy is bad um, like but like I would not say please. that a bourgeois revolution over a monarchy is necessarily a step forward doesn't seem yeah. to change much. Yeah. All the changes um, of like changes the service. I think I might have to go. Running okay. out of That's totally fine. Yeah, I'm That's very cool. yeah, very happy to have you thank on. Thank you for letting yeah. me on though. This is a yeah, good chat. Course. I wish I could stay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. And final thought about like the previous topics we were mentioning about like the bourgeoisie revolution and stuff like it's uh -huh. kind of interesting for America uh, how the yes we had a revolution and then the people that got into power after the revolution said okay now let's have all these laws against revolution so we that that doesn't happen to go or happen again or it doesn't happen to us oh yeah it's amazing like you look into all this stuff after um, like the whiskey rebellion for example. Mm -hmm. um, all of these like putting down uh, attempts at rebellion against the US government like immediately after having the revolution it's like wait a second <laughs> uh, and then it, and then I will get like uh, when I try to like advocate for like uh, anarchism which is my brand and leftism and like mm -hmm. people will say like human nature and then they'll quote james madison of how if like men weren't angels then we wouldn't need angels and it's just like okay okay people you realize you were they're quoting from a a sensically in at least american terms an aristocrat as like a bougie property owning rich land person and it's just white white men and and james madison who they hated like the idea of direct democracy and democracy and believes that like no the people shouldn't rule we should have representatives quotes uh to rule and jane manson thinks that like him and his peers are should be the representatives and it's just like yeah and they and people will like argue against like socialism and say oh it never like works because like it's been proven for like over 300 years with like because of human nature and like and <sighs> thomas hobbes stuff. or john locke and it's like okay hobbes i have to verify but i think hobbes is a racist but if you're saying that john <laughs> if, 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 yeah if, but if you're saying john locke john locke was a slave owner and advocated for being a slave owner because like, he was a rich, successful white man, as most philosophers in the like Enlightenment uh, period were. Because who else would have like time to be able to just like read a whole bunch of books and then sit around and think about things and then write a whole bunch of books? Uh, it happened to be successful white men, and so you you got to realize like who is the person that like saying those things, and especially since who they think are should be the leaders of the masses who say that like the masses should not rule they can't rule you can't trust them to rule so yeah all right so snapple and cats um while you're still in the chat i just wanted to really quickly ask you 
um, about Julian Castro. Oh, thank you, uh, Lavender Blue, for following. Um, so, do you think that if elected, Julian Castro would be more realistically able to implement um, reforms that would uh, do do um, effective harm reduction? Is that sort of your view? Like, besides the other things that you might want to um, criticize uh, Bernie for, or whatever. Like, I just mean, like, specifically why Julian. Okay, yeah. I can see that. It's I can certainly see it, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, there's, there's infinite discussion to be had about the, about the um, election, but, like, to be quite honestly... Uh, 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 to be quite honest about the election, it's like I don't see a lot of hope uh, in not having Trump get reelected. So it's like I'm a little bit more worried about what the hell are we gonna do when Trump's reelected. Like that's yeah more my uh, um yeah I would love to see more about Julian because I remember specifically in the first debate uh, he had brought up, for example, he screwed up his terminology, but he meant to say trans men should have access to like reproductive care and stuff like that. Um, he, he screwed up his terminology, but he apologized profusely afterwards. But it, like, it's like, mm. it's like I've never ever heard someone say that before. <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, so like, he he seems to at least know a little bit about what's up, you know. Even if he's sort of a capitalisty type dude, it's like he's way better than a lot of them out there, you know. Even if he's not the closest to me ideologically. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. That's, I think, um, yeah, having s some of the really strong, uh, increases in, um, I hate the term welfare program. Well, I mean, welfare is a good thing, right? But I mean, like, the mm -hmm. way people have stigmatized that term is, yeah. but, you know, you know, increases in assistance for people who need it is absolutely something that, mm -hmm. um, has to happen. Yeah, which is why, and then I, I have like gone back and forth on like uh, like um, on universal basic income and have been critical of the universal basic income. Part of it is just like it's like okay, yeah, it's a basic, but that means the basic. It's like a bare minimum, and mm -hmm. it's like it's not going to be give people much of a life as it doesn't give much of an income and so that's where some of my critiques that lie but if universal basic income is implemented now it would it like instantly improve like a lot of people's li lives like some of which like my comrades who have to like bake online in order to like be able to afford food and like like my friend joanna uh she's disabled with fibromyalgia Lyme disease and lupus and because she's in America in Minnesota there's the extra bit of the accessibility problem of where she needs a car in order to like even drive oh, to the God. food bank yeah. yeah so yeah there is like food banks that offer free food but people have to get there it's to amazing food. how well everything in America the way it's um uh like just the way like almost everything in our society is it seems like purposefully constructed to screw people over <laughs> yeah and it's like the the reason why for the lack of the uh, public transit from public transit system at least according to the uh adam ruins everything on cars is that the car industry is like we're not making money people are taking public transportation and like using mm -hmm. the roads we gotta do something about that yeah, that's so, the other yeah. thing is it's like the, they will do whatever they can to um, the system, even if it's not on purpose, the system naturally tends mm -hmm. towards uh, keeping people down and extracting more and more and more out of people and pushing it up towards the top. Um, it, oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a big issue with the food banks thing um, is like if people can't cook. Like oh, because they yeah. don't have time to, or they are just aren't able to physically, um, or, or like whatever. That's yeah, is that's a huge issue as well. It's like you, it's like oh, what am I gonna eat? The can of soup, you know? It's like that's. <laughs> 
it, yeah, which is why, uh, like, I it, my disabled comrades and friends, who I am close to these friends, uh, they do, they, they would, like, uh, they would sometimes ask me, it's just like, can you just, like, stop me, like, at $20 or give me $20 just so I can, like, uh, order out with Uber Eats? And so, yeah, I do that. And it, it goes back to the accessibility issue, which is it's strictly much more of a problem in America because of the vast amounts of, like, um, land and very much a lack of infrastructure across the country. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, exactly. Hot hot things, knives, and whatnot. That's a huge issue. And for for not just... it's, it's There's multiple people who have, like, not just Tourette's. Absolutely. Sensory issues with a lot of foods. I, I don't know what it is, but I, uh, there's something about certain... Um, types of peppers or whatever. I like literally get seizures. Crazy. So, mm. no, I'm sorry. But, That's yeah. interesting. Uh, I, I I heard some of that before. Yeah. But yeah, sensory issue, motor. It's like issues. the spiciness does it to me. It's weird. Mm, interesting. But that's why it's Not like people. Bad, but it's like physically right. shaking and stuff all the time when it happens. Yeah, which is which, and also that's why it's like the plastic straw ban. I didn't notice this until I recently went to oh like God, a subway just a because I have one. coupons, and it's like, oh, wait, what's what kind of straws is this? Oh, it's one of those paper ones. It's like title. okay, it's all enough for now. But just like I left one into the cup long enough, it's like oh yeah, it's starting to bend at the like the insert part. <sighs> Oh God! Uh, and who thought that was a good idea? And I think it's like um, one of my like uh, comrades who's a vegan on um, Facebook said, "It's like you know what? If you're so worried about like the the um, fish like accidentally eating all the plastics in the ocean, how come you're still eating the fish?" Yeah, I mean, a lot of things is just down to, I think a lot of people, um, miss, um, the fact that some foods, uh, for a huge amount of people are just the only things that they can afford. Um, yeah, exactly. That's a big problem with liberal veganism. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Obviously, I don't think anyone here is going to defend liberal veganism, but I mean, yeah, that's certainly yeah. a huge issue. That people like to always try and say, oh no no no, it's totally you. Everyone can eat vegan. It's it's totally affordable for everyone, and it's like it's just not true. Like food, yeah. food deserts are a thing. Also, having to yeah. cook things like mm -hmm. just less availability of things that aren't that you don't need to cook. It's a huge issue because mm -hmm. people don't have time or they just can't cook or whatever. Um, it's a it's a ma like this is why we need intersectionality with exactly. everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> vegan friends have problems with vegans. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yes, yeah, yeah. How oh much, yeah, yeah. Uh, argument there is uh, within veganism, and so, it's, which is why I like the the vegans that are my comrades. They're also like anarchists as well, or at least a socialist, where they like say they won't shame other people who like it, it, they the, because the food deaths or things or the accessibility mm -hmm. things uh like for. Be, not being vegans because they will agree the biggest problem with like animal liberation is capitalism right, not people exactly. who eat. yeah and it's like and it, it's there's also the climate change thing with it too to yes. throw on top of it which also stems obviously from capitalism like if it were cheaper to not do climate change we wouldn't be doing climate change oh yeah, yeah exactly. the um well, so the tea, coffee, whatever, um, if they can't do, um, microwaves, but they can handle boiling water, I mean, like you said, like a kettle, so, like, I have a kettle that I use, like, to brew tea at my desk, you know, mm -hmm. so, and I don't know how, how, um, they might have, like, really heavily insulated ones that could be helpful, just a thought, like, if that's something you want to look into, but if you don't want to try to, like, be near the hot things, don't, I don't want to, you know, I am not you. I can't determine. Yeah, I have no idea your own struggles. Um, what not? Yeah. Well, it's uh getting late, and like uh, oh, okay. uh, 
Uh, I may have to like uh, work tomorrow, as yeah. always, because of mm -hmm. capitalism. Uh, and I also try to like get as much like overtime I can get away with because my manager is very hands off and doesn't care because so long as my work's get done and he does think that like no I need that overtime to get work and since I'm still hourly and do get paid time and a half I will take advantage of that so I can help out my disabled comrades. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, dot snaps, uh, thank you for Duke inviting snaps. me. Uh, Duke <laughs> oh, yeah. snaps. I was new and so it's like wait yeah, a minute yeah. how did you pronounce it? Uh, and so it was just a really cool, great to talk to you and it's, yeah mm -hmm. it was like. Yeah. I, I thought like well you know what I have become instant friends with people <laughs> because of like Revolution Girl Utena yeah, and you're really just fun. like yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like ooh <laughs> that's exactly how I became instant friends with my disabled comrade Joanna who I've been like assisting a lot uh, mm -hmm. like Safira Joe on like Tumblr uh, so I'm Summer Geek on Twitter on Summer Geek on YouTube I do have a Twitch channel I just like don't go on their stream I could do more of that because I have the capabilities to do it should be like easy to do so like uh, follow me there and I co-host uh, Social Justice Alchemy each Saturday at 2pm Eastern and uh, like 6pm uh, UTC uh, we're not doing a show this Saturday because of Thanksgiving because of the all day that we where we celebrate the uh, horrible atrocities the genocide with like thanks and, and thanks to everyone yeah. so we're not gonna do a, a, a stream this saturday but like most every other saturdays we are available and i'm usually always on there so yeah mm -hmm. uh, thank you for coming uh, yeah inviting me on it's been it's been very good i'm very happy to uh meet you and have you on thank you so much mm-hmm